Hello, everyone. Today's devotional reading will be from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, verses 1 through 20, where it is written, They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes. And when he had stepped out of the boat, immediately a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. He lived among the tombs, and no one could restrain him any more, even with a chain. For he had often been restrained with shackles and chains, but the chains he wrenched apart, and the shackles he broke in pieces, and no one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always howling, bruising himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed down before him, and he shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he had said to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. That Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. He begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there on the hillside a great herd of swine was feeding, and the unclean spirits begged him, Send us into the swine, let us enter them. So he gave them permission. And the unclean spirit came out and entered the swine, and the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank of the sea and was drowned into the sea. The swine herds ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came to see what, what it was that had happened. They came to Jesus and saw the demoniac sitting there, clothed in his right mind, the very man who had, who had had the legion, and they were afraid. Those who had seen what had happened to the de demoniac and to the swine reported it. Then they began to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhood. As he was getting to the boat, the man who had been possessed by demons begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus refused and said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you, what mercy he has shown you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The supernatural. It's real. Angels and demons do exist. Case in point, this text. Now, the demons, it's not like a horror film where it's uh, people are rotating their heads and spewing split pea vomit. Come on. It's, it's Hollywood. They need to make a buck. It's not like a horror film. Demonic activity is very real, and we see it all the time in mean-spirited, self-destructive behavior. Someone does something very mean, like insults someone or does vandalism or just does something terrible, whether it's horrific or petty, then you ask, why do you do that? Well, I don't know. Demonic activity. It's real. In this case, it was destroying someone's life, and the Lord says, get out, and restores life to someone. He didn't raise someone from the dead, but this guy was completely cut off from society, from any kind of normal life, and the Lord restored society and normal life to him. The demons on the way out did some damage. Cattle, swine was valuable property, which was destroyed. But obviously, a human being needs more than property. So we see that the um, supernatural is real. And against the supernatural, we are totally and utterly helpless. Good news. Jesus Christ is far from helpless. Look how the demon immediately, immediately submits to him and calls him Lord. Might not like him. Might be terrified of our Lord Jesus Christ. But yes, he knows that he is Lord. We are unbelievably precious to Jesus Christ. Good news. We can call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. But it's a reminder, yes, the supernatural is real. When we sin, we can't say, well, the devil made me do it. Yes, but you cooperated with him. It's still not your responsibility. The demons are afraid of him. But should we be afraid of Jesus Christ? On the cross, he says, it is finished and we're forgiven. So instead of being terrified of Jesus Christ, I mean, we should certainly respect him that he's God and we're not. But ultimately, he's a loving father. We can go to him and say, forgive me, God, I have sinned. And he forgives us when we sincerely mean that. And as for the supernatural, I don't need to be afraid. We know Jesus Christ can have these people for breakfast any day. Simply name him, and the supernatural is clear. Rather, the opportunity here is to be mindful. The supernatural is real. It's influencing people. The other mess we find our world in right now, I don't think is strictly human origin. Satan's working on this world overtime. Meaning, the church, the people of God, us, need to be working overtime in this world as well. 
letting people know. Kindness, love, being a good person matters. It's not just one way. It's God's way, and God cares. That's what you need to be doing right now. That is our best strategy against the supernatural, by letting the kingdom of God come on this earth by what we do. That is that. Let us close with prayer. Lord, thank you for forgiving us when we repent. Help us always to be your agents in this world to fight against the evil forces. Amen.